Mr. Loxy says, this is not at all surprising if you understand how hardware virtualization works. Virtualization just means the process is separated from the rest of the operating system, Mac OS, and it gets a share of the CPU resources and it uses uh, mechanisms that are built into the hardware. There's no reason why those instructions should run slower other than they're not compiled for, he's talking about another test I did with Volterra. But this brings up an interesting thing. I, I've never done a test where I test virtualized environment versus a, a non-virtualized environment, like a direct comparison on an Apple Silicon machine. So I got myself a little Python example code right here from Benchmark's game. This particular test is called nBody. It's a Python program, but it uses only one core of the CPU, which is what we need here to do the comparison. And I'll explain why in a second. Grab this code, paste it in here. I'm gonna run it with Python 3.9 in a Conda environment. So uh, how am I gonna do the comparison? Well, I would have liked to compare it to running it on Ubuntu. But then I thought, okay, well, Ubuntu and Mac OS are different OS and um, I'm sure I'm gonna get called out on it. People are gonna say, oh, well, you're running it on Mac OS versus Ubuntu, not fair. So I decided to install a virtual Mac OS inside Mac OS. And yes, with Parallels, uh, this is not a sponsored video or anything. I just use this program a lot. I got Ubuntu here, I got Windows, and now I got Mac OS. Just really easy to install a new OS. And here it is, it's a virtual Mac OS right inside my Mac OS. <laughs> It's the same OS, and uh, in case you are wondering, yes, it is all ARM-based, even within the virtual machine. So I'm gonna pop open terminal here, and I already have Conda installed. Ooh, this is so tiny, let's make it bigger. It could get really confusing, by the way, if uh, <laughs> if I enter full screen mode, now I don't know which Mac OS I'm in. Python 3.9, I believe. Yeah, 3.9.12 here, and why am I still in the virtual? And this is not the virtual one. <laughs> I'm gonna get confused here. 3912 here as well. I got the code for this nBody algorithm on both of these now. Now I'm gonna run this on Mac OS versus Mac OS. And while it's running, I'm gonna do one at a time, by the way. So I'm gonna do time Python index, and then the parameter that Benchmark's game tells me to use is 50 million, but I'm gonna go to 5 million just so that it's quicker. Let's have the VM run that. And I'm only using the one core algorithm because this is a virtual machine. It's not letting me max out the number of cores. If I were to do a multi-core test here, it would always lose because the host machine will have a certain amount of cores, but the virtual machine can never have as many cores as the host. Hey, Alex from the future here, interrupting the program. This video you're watching was actually shot in November before the new MacBook Pros were announced. So now I can do a multi-core comparison with the M1 Max on the M2 Max. Uh, stay tuned, that's coming up. Okay, so we have a result here, which is 26.53 seconds. Cool, now let's run it here in the host, not the virtual one, in the real, real one. Time, Python, 5 million. All right, let's see if what Mr. Loxy says is uh, right or maybe close to right. There's gonna be a little bit of variability, I'm sure, but um, let's see what the result will say. Okay, that's really freaking close. 26.44, so 26 and a half seconds here, 26 and a half seconds here, about the same. That's pretty cool. That means if you're running a virtual machine, whether you're running Mac, whether you're running Windows, you're gonna get pretty close to that hardware speed that a single core can get you. Now, I wanna run this one more time and I wanna see what's happening in Activity Monitor on the virtual machine as well as Activity Monitor on the host. So it's running right now. Let's check out the Activity Monitor here on the VM, sort by CPU. There it is, Python is taking up 99. 9%. Let's have a look at activity monitor on the host. Ah, there it is. Virtual machine service. So it's not exposing it as Python because it doesn't know what that what's running in the virtual machine, but it knows that the VM is taking up about one core of the CPUs. Let's compare the host to an instance of Linux or Ubuntu running virtually. And this will tell us if uh, Ubuntu virtualized can actually be faster or about the same than Mac OS. And if it's faster than Mac OS, is getting in the way of uh, doing some Python related programming. I'm gonna time this with the same parameter of 5 million. Let's go. <laughs> All right. 
Well, look at that. Just to remind you, it was 26 seconds in the host. This is running without anything else, just in the host, not virtual. And virtual Linux has a time of 20.95 seconds. So it's running faster on virtual Linux than purely on the host on bare metal. All right, it's two months later. This is good because I get to show you what's happening on this M2 Max. Can a virtual 12 core machine beat the physical 10 core machine? And what I did was I actually used migration assistant to copy from this machine to this machine. So it retained all the state, including the virtual machine that was running on this thing. Let's see if this N body test can be beaten on this new machine. All right, look at that. We've got 24.4 seconds for that N body single core test. So the single core test in a VM is faster than a single core test here. So we're getting that benefit into the virtual machine without the virtual machine itself causing any kind of bottleneck, which I'm really happy about actually, because I use VMs quite a bit. Looking at the VM here, it says it's allocating only six cores to the virtual Mac system. So it might not actually win the metal broad test. When it comes to allocating the number of cores, you can do that for Windows machines in parallels, you can do that for Linux machines, but it doesn't let you have control over Mac OS for some reason. I don't know why. Okay, I'm set up on both of these machines. This is gonna be a real race here. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see what happens here. I thought that this was gonna get all the cores. Maybe this is not gonna do so well. What I like about this test is uh, it really, really pumps all the cores and check out the temperature of the host here. The temperature of the host is up to 91 degrees, even though we're running in a virtual machine. All the performance cores are being used. Oh, we got a result. 34.8 seconds total on the M1 Max using all the 10 cores and 46.1 on the uh, virtual machine, I guess six cores. A little disappointing, but now I gotta run it on the host M2 Max to vindicate this machine. All right, let's go. And look at that. Now that I'm running it on the host, we're getting in the hundreds uh, in the temperature. Look at that CPU utilization, wow. We've got all 12 cores involved in this one. Interestingly, when we're running this test on the virtual machine, we're using only performance cores, but we're running it on the host, we're using all the cores. So we get a result of 30 seconds versus the 34 that we got on the M1 Max. What's that itch in my brain? There's something I'm missing. Oh yeah, Linux virtual on the new machine. You were gonna call me out on that, weren't you? I know you are. Now with Linux, I can change the number of cores that are allocated to the virtual machine. Here on the M1 Max, I can set a maximum of 10 cores. Probably not advisable to do this in a real world scenario. Here I can do 12. <laughs> Let's start the machine up and do the test. The moment of truth has arrived. I'm gonna push the buttons. Um, I am forgetting something again. Stupid, stupid. We need the Schwarzenegger, of course. Here he is. <laughs> we got the fingers ready to go on the return keys. All I gotta do is push that big red button and we're off. <laughs> there they go. Okay, they're done. And just as we suspected, well, as I suspected, did you suspect? I suspect you might've also suspected 36.2 seconds over here on the M1 Max virtual Linux and 29 seconds over here on virtual Linux on the M2 Max. And just to remind you, this does beat the 34.8 seconds that we got on the host on the M1 Max for the same test. If you like this video and this kind of tests, hit that like button. It's free for you and it helps me out quite a bit and I really appreciate it, thank you. And thanks to Mr. Loxy for your comment suggesting this test. Sometimes I run tests that are suggested in the comments, so leave your comments. All right, folks, I'll see you next time. I mean, I'll be back, yeah.